Why don't you all stand up at this time as we start this remaining part of the service by reading the word of God. Let us stand and give reverence and honor and show him that we receive his word and believe in it and we want it to be fulfilled in our day and time and age. We're going to read from the book of Matthew in the New Testament, the very first book from chapter 24. We're going to read three verses from this chapter and then after that we'll move on to the book of Revelation. First let us go to Matthew chapter 24 verse 15 then we'll go to verse 21 and then we'll read verse 29. Let us start from Matthew chapter 24 verse 15 all together. Therefore when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place who reads let him understand verse 21 for then there will be great tribulation such as not been since the beginning of the world until this time no no ever shall be let us go to verse 29 immediately after the tribulation of those days the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light the stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken let us now turn to the last book the Bible book of Revelation chapter 19 we're going to read from verse 11 till verse 13 the revelation of Jesus Christ to his apostle John let us read Revelation 19 verse 11 onwards now I saw heaven opened and behold a white horse and he who sat on him was called faithful and true and in righteousness he judges and makes war his eyes were like a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns he had a name written that no one knew except himself he was clothed with a rope dipped in blood and his name is called the word of God thank you may be seated at this time we are seeing this morning the powerful glorious written of Jesus Christ we saw two weeks ago what Jesus himself had spoken and was written in Matthew chapter 24 verse 30 where he said then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven this will happen after the abomination of the desolation and the great tribulation and then after that the wrath of God the judgment of God on the wicked when all that is accomplished then the seventh in the order that is there in the all of it discourse that Jesus gave the cosmic terrestrial order of events these things will happen as Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24 from verse 30 then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven then all the tribes of the people of the earth will mourn and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory we saw that this verse says that there will be a sign in the sky and all will see Christ's sign in the sky all the people when they see it will lament and wail and no one at that time can say I have not seen it because it will be visible and prominent that will be the time when God will come in a visible fashion that with a natural eye every human being would be able to see right now you're called as believers because you have to believe for you know and you see his signs you see the hand of God in your life the hand of God in the creation that is there on this world and in the universe and you know that this is not something that could have happened by chance you're able to comprehend you're able to discern you're able to perceive that God is the one who has created me and God is the one who has created all that is there on earth but at that time everyone even the unbelievers the haters of God will see and then after they see the sign which will be there for some time then Jesus will come on the clouds and all will see Christ's power 
and all will see Christ's great glory. This is the final in the order of events that will take place that Jesus mentioned in the cosmic terrestrial order of events after the beginning of the birth pangs. We are in the beginning. These are called the beginning of sorrows as Jesus himself said. These are not the end of sorrows. The days that we are living in things are happening because the world has come to such a state where sin and evil has increased that it brings forth all these sicknesses and diseases because of the acts of men and how they've twisted and turned everything upside down what was bad and evil is now considered good and all right they've changed the markers the indicators they flipped it all upside down so that a new generation has come up which doesn't know what is right what is wrong because of that the sorrows take place or not because of that the world is shaking up because God is not going to step in at all times and solve all the problems of man because we're coming to a time in the age of the earth where the next age has to start and God is allowing man to prepare for that so that is why he doesn't step in and stop the shake up throughout the centuries of men being on earth many things could have wiped out humanity but God stepped in and he showed his mercy and compassion but when he has spoken and revealed his plan for the world and the people of the world he sometimes steps back and let things take its own turn because men did not acknowledge God the end of the age is coming and it will start when the disciples of Christ are taken up in rapture and the fourth thing that will happen is the Antichrist the idol and the false prophet will be revealed in the holy of holies in the temple in Jerusalem and then the great tribulation and the judgment on the wicked will start and then will be the second coming of Christ and this morning we've been seeing from the book of Revelation what exactly will happen because you need to know the power and the glory of Jesus Christ so that you would understand how awesome it is how marvelous and wonderful that would be God has written it Jesus ensured and made it a point to come and meet his disciple John on the island of Patmos and revealed all these things to him so that he would send it to the church that is there in all the earth so that we would get to know of the things that would happen if Jesus made it a point to come again and reveal these things to the church and each and every one of you need to know it you've got to understand it you've got to grasp the gravity of all these things that will take place the significance of all these things that is why all these things are given in detail what Jesus had spoken in Matthew is now completely explained in clear detail and in a precise fashion Jesus will open up the heaven for all that's how he was able to see the heavens opened at that time throughout the history of mankind the heavens have not been always open because of sin the heavens were shut even when Jesus came on earth he sent his apostles and he commanded them in Matthew chapter 10 verse 5 and 6 saying do not go into the way of the Gentiles and do not enter a city of the Samaritans but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel he didn't want them to leave the nation of Israel at that time he wanted them to stay there he had commanded them it was not a suggestion they were commanded not to go outside the nation of Israel to the Gentiles we each and every one of us who are not Jews are the Gentiles the non-Jews we were not a chosen people we were the ones who once worshipped wrong and false gods man-made gods and accepted and 
followed demonic doctrines and ideologies in the previous generations and there was no way that we could have entered into the presence of God but God opened the heaven 2000 years ago he allowed the Gentiles to receive the grace and mercy and the salvation of God he used a specific time when the church was ready in Israel then according to the word of God according to what Jesus said you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem in Judea and Samaria and then to the ends of the earth so first God poured out his Holy Spirit in Jerusalem then it spread out to Judea and then it reached those who were closest there but there came a time for the heavens to be opened again because over the Gentile nations over the Gentile people groups over all of us who are here outside of Israel every other nation in all the earth the gospel had to be preached and we have received the power of God so Peter the Apostle on the chosen day when he was praying he suddenly fell into a trance and he saw the heavens open and an object like a great sheet bound at four corners descended to him down to the earth and it he could see all kinds of four-footed animals of the earth wild beasts creeping things and birds of the air you can see this in Acts chapter 10 and then he heard a voice which said rise Peter kill and eat but Peter said not so Lord for I have never eaten anything common or unclean at that time God revealed something that would change the situation in the world he said what God has cleansed you must not call common because Jesus had shed his blood and he had approached God the Father and entered into the Holy of Holies with his own blood the way was made and this was done three times so that he would grasp the significance of this so that it would be imprinted in his heart and his mind that he wouldn't forget because immediately after that as he's thinking about it the Holy Spirit tells him there are men seeking you who have come go with them doubt nothing for I have sent them to you and so when he goes and he meets them he tells them you know how unlawful it is for a Jewish man to keep company with or go to one of another nation but God has chose, shown me that I should not call any man common or unclean he kept the command of God do not depart from the nation of Israel do not go to any of the Gentiles and all the apostles though they had the power of God and the gospel which is the light which could shine into the darkness of men and save them they did not leave Israel at that time you got to know how important how significant this opening of heaven was at that time because if God had not opened the heavens at that time we would still be in darkness we would still be in bondage you will still not have heard the name of Jesus you would still have no hope especially in this kind of a situation when there is darkness in the world we could have never had any hope we would not know what would hold for us tomorrow but God opened the heavens hallelujah what an awesome God he is how merciful he is and even as he's preaching there the Holy Spirit falls on the Gentiles for the very first time and they all receive the grace and mercy of God they receive the salvation of God and then he comes back to Jerusalem and when he comes and reports this and speaks about to the apostles and the other disciples who are there that the Gentiles had received the word of God it says that those who were there who were of the Jews contended with him in Acts chapter 11 verse 2 they fought with him saying how can you go to the house of a Gentile how can you go there and 
be with them this is how strict it was they were not supposed to leave and if god had not opened the heaven at that time and given him this vision none of the apostles of dad stepped out of israel thomas would have not come down to the city of chennai carrying the gospel 2000 years ago but now he came and he preached the gospel and we are all here the fruits of his hard labor and work and they were able to accept and believe that god was merciful why was 17 onwards it says if therefore god gave them the same gift as he gave us when we believed on the lord jesus christ who was i that i could withstand god and how privileged you are that you receive the same gift that the apostles and the disciples belong to the nation of israel the children of abraham received at that time he did not keep anything away from you even they as a nation could not enter into the tabernacle before jesus christ came and died for them they could not be priests they could not be connected with god or be acceptable unto god they were spiritual hierarchies and levels of acceptance even in that chosen nation in the old testament we can see only the high priest could go in and only the levites could help him inside the tabernacle the entire nation stood outside and watched we meet on a sunday morning but they would have stood outside the tabernacle of god the temple of god on a sabbath day they would have not been able to go inside imagine you come on a sunday morning and you're standing outside the gate of the church premises and only the high priest and the levites can come in and they start the offerings and the sacrifices and praise and worship and offering prayers unto god how long it takes 2 hours 3 hours for them to go from one altar to the other for them to get cleanse themselves and then go right up inside and then ensure that the menorah is lit properly and the oil is flowing and eat from the table of shoe bread and then go and offer the prayers of the people at the altar of incense and then god will speak and god will reveal and then after that they will come and stand outside the tabernacle and lift up their hands and bless the people and tell them what god has told them till that time they would have had to stand outside and wait for the high priests and the levites to come out but now you have received the gift of god you are able to come in and sit down and be here in his presence and receive all his word and his blessing you should clap your hands and thank god for he opened the heavens at that time and he has been gracious and merciful before men were accepted unto god because of jesus christ the heavens were shut up like iron and bronze deuteronomy chapter 28 was 23 it says your heavens which are over you over your head shall be bronze and the earth which is under you shall be iron it would not yield it was in a state of lockdown and a state in which it would not allow man to take care of it and to be blessed with its fruits that's why it was like iron they had to fight with that which was there which was supposed to have been like a garden of eden but then because of sin it failed to yield unto them what they wanted leviticus 26 was 19 says why this happened I will break the pride of your power I will make your heavens like iron and your earth like bronze because of the sin that is there because of the disobedience of man so do not take the heavens that are opening and that have been opened for us to be something very light which is just normal or which is just something 
which is an everyday occurrence it is not many men of god many people of god had to wait all their life and some of them could not even have it in their own life they looked ahead to the birth of jesus christ and had faith in him that one day he would come and that he would deliver them so that they can be with god once again and they waited for thousands of years but because man did not obey the voice of god this happened go to deuteronomy the previous verse chapter 28 was 15 it tells about why the heavens were bronze and the earth were like iron it says but if it shall come to pass if you do not obey the voice of the lord your god to observe carefully all his commandments and his statutes which i command you today that all these curses will come upon you and overtake you and one of that curses the heavens being like bronze and the earth like iron that it does not bear fruit and men with their sweat try to sow and reap and they struggle to survive and live you want the blessing of god you want the heavens to be opened over your life you want all that is there in your life to be fruitful you got to keep his commandments and his statutes but in the world we now live in men has completely gone away from god they do not accept that there are commandments of god they do not accept that there is a moral law and a moral law giver they say i will do what i want i decide i make my own laws i will live my own life in my own fashion and manner who can question or ask me and that is why we are in this kind of a situation of darkness with all the signs of the last days taking place wars rumors of war even in our own nation pestilences and famines and earthquakes and the world is being shaken up because what god has spoken cannot be changed when we walk away from light we enter into darkness of our own no one is doing that but we ourselves but the men of god prophets like isaiah cried out to god and they prayed saying oh lord that you would tear up the skies that you would rend the heavens and as as 64 was one he says that you would come down that the mountains might shake at your presence that was his prayer that was his cry but in his time he never was able to see jesus in the flesh he was not able to experience the blessing that would come after the death burial and resurrection of jesus christ he knew the heavens were shut the son of god was not sent that is why he's saying oh tear open the skies and come down to earth that then everything would change the problems that we are facing no amount of fixing can make the world any better there are no earthly solutions man says in his pride the world will become better everything will be resolved we'll find the solution we'll find the cure we'll give you cheap and free energy we'll give you the food that you need many nations there being motivated and like to and taken into the way of a socialistic system of handling the nations where they say you don't worry we will take care of you we'll feed you that will lead down to communism where the government is the one which will provide for the people and take control of the people government will take the position of god and tell the people what they are supposed to do and then when they take that up they will not allow the people of that nation to look to god they will stop them from connecting with god they will want to shut down churches and tell the people you cannot worship god you are wasting your time we are the ones you got to look up to you can see that in the communist nations it starts by saying the government will fix all the problem then all the other things are slowly shut down they're all made illegal and then everyone is controlled and 
a fashion where it becomes an atheistic nation. When a car starts breaking down, you can fix it for some time and then when every part of it starts breaking down, you keep on fixing, there is no end to it at times. You've got to buy a new one. When the tire in your vehicle gets one puncture, you can patch it up, gets another puncture, you can patch it up and then you can keep patching it up till finally there are more patches than there are tire. It's time to change the tire. We love, live in a world where we cannot fix the problems of the world. Man cannot save earth. There is no permanent solution. That is why this cry and this prayer of Isaiah should be prayed by all of us saying all that you would tear the skies open and come down to earth for Jesus is the one who can fix the problems of humanity and thank God he will come at that time. He will open the heavens. So do not take it lightly thinking, oh, just the heavens are opening. Okay. No. For thousands of years, it has not opened. That time when it opens for Jesus to come as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords will be a unique and a special time because till then, Jesus has never come on earth and set foot to rule as a king. He came as a savior and he came to die for the sins of all. But at that time he will come and he will be able to resolve and that will be the golden age of the earth. The utopia that everyone wants will come only when Jesus Christ comes and rules and reigns on earth. No government on earth, no man, no president, no prime minister, no chief minister can be able to fix all the problems and solve everything of any country or, or any state or city. How good their intentions are and how much they work hard towards it. They will not be able to control everything everywhere. But when Jesus sets foot, the very air will change. The ground that we stand on will change. Everything all around will change. That will be how it was when Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden. The heavens will be open and a white horse that he saw that was important and significant because Jesus is the only one who can come on that white horse. Sometime back we saw about how the Antichrist will impersonate Jesus Christ will come and deceive people. He is a fake white horse rider. Revelation 6 chapter 6 verse 2 when the first seal is opened a white horse and he who sat on it had a bow comes with a crown on his head and he went conquering and to conquer but he has no right to sit on that white horse because he is the deceiver on the false white horse because he is the son of perdition he is the agent of the devil revelation 12 9 says about the devil the Satan who deceives the whole world. That's why the Antichrist will come on the white horse and he'll deceive the world. When the church is taken up, he will come on a white horse and he'll act like he is the savior of the world and many will be deceived at that time. Second Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3, it says, As the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, took the form of God, becoming like an angel of light, that's why Jesus says in Matthew 24 verse 4, Take heed that no one deceives you. Why? He says, because many will deceive. Because many will come in my name and say, I am the Christ. And will deceive many. And it will become such a time of deception. It says that the Antichrist will perform and show signs and wonders in Mark 13 verse 22. To deceive if possible even the elect. They will show such signs and wonders that those who get left behind, some of them will think that maybe he is the Christ. Maybe he is the chosen one. They would almost get deceived and some would get deceived. Very few would be able to resist the pull and the deception at that time. The deception has started already. Right from the time the first day you heard that word called fake news. 
now the whole world is deceived by the devil he has seen to it that they are in his grasp that's what it says who deceives the whole world what you read on the headlines nowadays you cannot completely totally accept it there are people who control or decide what gets written on a headline what are the pictures that come up so that they are shown in good light because they've come to realize that in a democracy people will vote for those who have good news about themselves they know that if they control the news media then they can change the perception of the people that is why you see all the different leaders and parties want to start a news channel and start something so that they can tell what they want to tell all over the world the truth is not what gets written the whole news media times seem to be under the control of the deceiver the devil you might think the false prophet is just one person i want to tell you the false prophet of these last days is the news media which stands up as a prophet and tells the people what is right what is wrong projects a particular image of the rulers of the world and they are false prophets who are misleading you they're not guiding you towards the truth they're making you accept a lie the whole news media has become like a false prophet in these last days who are deceiving the people of the world when god is fulfilling a plan they come and speak completely opposite when they know that this is not the truth they are not accepting it because they have their own dark minds and their own dark hidden agendas in the background you got to be careful you've got to have discernment spiritual discernment to know what the plan of god who's the chosen vessel of god when the time for election comes you've got to know who's the one god is supporting you've got to have a clear year to hear the voice of god otherwise you would be deceived you look at all the things that are written and said about outside because god definitely has a preference you got to ask god what do you want me to do which side do you want me to take he has concern for every nation of the world he knows that the outcome of an election will decide what happens in the next 5 years in that particular nation and therefore he's not going to take his hands off and say you do whatever you want to do we shouldn't allow him to take his hands off we got to look to him and ask him and receive from his his direction his guidance the truth from him from the holy spirit the white that this horse has as a color represents the purity and sinlessness we had sins which are like scarlet which were red like crimson as as 1 was 18 says though your sins are like scarlet they shall be white as snow though they are red like crimson they shall be as wool when we live right then god would be the one who would allow us to walk with him in white revelation 3 4 tells about those who were there in this church in sardis they had not defiled their spiritual garments not talking about physical garments but spiritual dark garments which can be defiled by sin which the devil knows and sees which god knows and sees but here there were a few who had not defiled themselves and because they had not defiled their garments jesus says they shall walk with me in white for they are worthy that's why jesus rides on the white horse to signify and show that he is sinless that he is a god of purity he is a god who is clean he has no deception in him he is the truth the devil knows without deceiving no one would support him his end time plan for the world would not get fulfilled if he is not able to deceive the people of the world he's got his agents who will be expert at deception they will talk and cast a spell over the people 
you've got to know where the spirit of god is where the spirit of truth is and where the spirit of lie and error is if you're not able to do that you'll find yourself standing against god and opposing god because you cannot listen to what they say they will say one thing but what they have in their mind and what their intention is and what they do in the background how they set things in motion and how they manipulate and use all the power that they have through the various departments and to the various people who work under them will be completely different from what they say outside they will act like they are very innocent and they're very good and they want only good to happen for all but by their fruits you will know them in this few days in a few months and years you will see what they promote what they support and what they want so you've got to be careful it'll be too late for you after you made the choice to later regret it and you find yourself having supported someone who's not a supporter of god but rather an enemy of god why i'm saying that is you've got to ask god and prepare yourself as a church of jesus christ you're the one who are here to shine the light and you shine the light by making the right choices don't take it lightly you got to prepare yourself much ahead so that you don't do what is wrong but you do what is right because we will definitely have to give account to our god for the choices we make the people we support and what statements we make for them or against them jesus is the faithful one just few days ago i read in the news about how one girl was going to get married and she had spent 20000 dollars along with boy had to be a groom and thought that the church was booked got everything set up the bridesmaid and maid of honor and everybody they did everything and that's when they found out that the church was actually not booked and still they went ahead and stood there in the church in the altar and then called the bridegroom saying okay it's going to start where are you and he said oh i'm not able to get my uber i'll still come i'll still come but he never turned up saying i couldn't find a uber but actually his intention was never to turn up but he never showed it till the very end and the marriage had to be called off this didn't happen in our nation but you can see how people can be shocked when they experience a lie this groom to be had never shown anything till that time of not keeping his word or his promise he made it look like everything was going to take place and he was completely for it till that moment when it came and he wasn't there jesus is the faithful one that is why the verse is given saying i saw the heavens opened and behold a white horse and he who sat on him was called first faithful your god is faithful and when he comes opening the heavens at that time the world can know and you can know that he is a faithful one he has kept his word jesus keeps his word the word that he said in john chapter 14 verse 2 and 3 which we saw last week where he says i go to prepare a place for you and if i were to prepare a place for you i will come again and receive you to myself he will come and receive the church and after the supper after the celebration in heaven he will come down he keeps his word deuteronomy 7:9 says therefore know that the lord your god he is god the faithful god who keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations with those who love him and keep his commandments he is the faithful god oh Hallelujah. Why don't you clap your hands and bless our faithful God? He has not forgotten about you. He will not forget the world that he has created. He need not even be bothered about it. He can be in the heavens. It's not like he has nothing there to do. He can just give up on mankind and on this world and just walk away that's what most human beings would do 
when it gets difficult when they think it is not going to be comfortable when they see some suffering in the future for the choices they made they immediately walk out they do not want to give up they don't want to give up on their comforts god could be seated on that wonderful throne in heaven with all the angels and all the heavenly hosts around him and have all the wonderful things there he did not leave it all and come down to such an earth where there is so much of chaos and confusion how many would want to marry you if you are in the state that the world is in very few would say oh i come and i bring everything i don't need anything from you imagine you're on the streets on the platform and you have no qualification you have no money and you're covered in filth and dust and you do not know anything and you're in sickness and in disease you're broken down and you're disturbed and you are unstable who would want to come and connect with someone like that they will ask for your bio data and your credentials and they look at the photo and then they see all the list of the things what are the qualification what is the height what is the color of the skin and everything and then finally if they think oh okay this looks like a very wonderful eligible option that's when they will say okay we'll spend the rest of our life and we do not know how long that will actually last in the present day and age but jesus left heaven to come down for all of us and steps into this dark evil sinful filthy rotten broken down world he is the faithful one because he has kept he's given his word he will keep it we live in a time when the faithful are disappearing on earth it's difficult to find someone who is faithful who will say something and keep it and follow it up psalm 12 from verse 1 david is crying out saying help lord he's crying out to god saying god help me why he says the godly man ceases the faithful disappear from among the sons of men he doesn't know who to trust he thought they will be there that they will show up that they will do this and do that but suddenly when it became difficult they all forsook and ran away he says they speak idly everyone with his neighbor they just want to fill the silence with what a words they can speak with flattering lips and with a double heart they speak that's what he says in verse 2 see that psalm chapter 12 verse 2 just idly just get together and just make statements oh i'll do this i'll do that there is no need for them to say any of those things they just want to come and show off and they just want to come and make all kinds of statements oh don't worry we'll do this oh that i know that person i know this person we'll get it done you don't worry i'll make this happen i'll make that happen i know him i can do all that that's what it says speaking idly and with flattering lips with a double heart they know inside oh, just have to say all these things to get out of this situation a small talk so that they can at that time not be put in a tight spot at that time they don't have to lose face they just want to at that time in the midst of all the other people when a group of people have gathered they want to just tell and make it look like oh i can do it oh yes yes don't all none of you worry i'll get it all done for all of you and all that but inside they say i, I hope i can run away waiting for the chance and suddenly on call calls okay i've got a call i've got to go and run because they have a double heart they have no intention it says may the lord cut off all flattering lips in verse 3 and the tongue that speaks proud things say oh i can do this i can do that i've gone here i've gone there i know the world i know everything verse 4 it says who have said with our tongue we will prevail those who talk too much they have not been with god too much our lips are our own who is lord over us that's what these people are asking with our tongue we will prevail we'll talk our way out we'll talk our way through 
it's our own lips we we'll use the words to say whatever we want who can ask us about it any time that's why they ask you to write it down on a stamp paper and get two witnesses because the spoken word has got no value in this present day and age and people know that proverbs 20 verse 6 it says most men will proclaim each his own goodness and say oh i've gone here i've gone there i've done this i've done that i'm great i'm wonderful i'm awesome i'm mighty but who can find a faithful man that's what god is asking proverbs 26 men will proclaim each his own goodness but who can find a faithful man when push comes to shove they will not be up to it everything will be spoken about but when it comes down to money they will flee when it comes down to helping and supporting and opening up the purse and the wallet to do something stand up and get in place and do something that is going to be constructive and good they will not be there that's the kind of situation we are in but jesus christ he shed his own precious blood he gave up heaven and earth he has given you gifts he gives you everything you need for all your life he is a true god that's what it says he is called faithful and true there are many lying wonders on this earth that's how satan would deceive in those days and it has started already second thessalonians chapter 2 verse 9 it says the coming of the lawless one is according to the working of satan with all power and signs and lying wonders the devil is just a trickster magician who acts like those things are getting done they're not true wonders he'll make it look like he knows everything about you but it's just an evil spirit that is just telling lies he can know the past but he doesn't know the future that's how soothsayers that's how all those who come and tell you the past all the palm readers and all those who work in all those kinds of dark and occultic world of false revelation and false prophecy will tell the things that happened in the past do not listen to them because they cannot say one thing about the future because your god holds the future and he knows what will happen and he only has the power to make it come true he will work with lying wonders and deceive the world and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved why are they allowed in such a state god was merciful god was truthful god showed his love but they rejected it and refused it and they mocked it and despised it and so he takes his hands off and then the shake up comes and then the antichrist comes and for this reason god will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie when the spirit of god and the presence of god gets lifted up from a person's life from a city from a state from the nation the manifestations of the devil and the evil one would increase his signs and his wonders will increase even now there are nations in which if i tell you things you might get shaken up there have been instances of which human beings disappear they shape shift they make things disappear they move around they astro project things are happening even right now because those are the evil that will be released at that time they will increase at that time wild beasts which will be released is not just going to be the beast that you see in the jungle there will be human beings who will be deformed and distorted who will do terrible things at that time it has happened in the past it will happen in the future when the church is lifted up i can show you true occurrences documentaries about how some people are able to disappear because 
an evil spirit came and spoke to them and it takes them and moves with them and does many things with them because that nation was completely disconnected from God and they were completely in the occult that's what it will happen at that time for this reason God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie John 8 44 it says those who lie and act deceive and those who reject Christ he says to them you are of your father the devil and the desires of your father you do because he was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him there can be no truth in the devil no truth in the Antichrist and the false prophet there can be no truth in those who reject Jesus Christ when he speaks a lie he speaks from his own resources for he is a liar and a father of it he creates the lie he spreads the lie and many are deceived in all the world by the lies that he has generated and created and made a system out of it deceiving people one john 5 19 it says we know that we are of god and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one the whole world lies see that verse the whole world is under the control of the wicked one he sways them he moves them in the direction that he wants to he promotes a lie he spreads it so that he can topple government so that he can bring up people of his own so that he can turn the hearts of men and their minds so that he can cause disturbance in the nations of the world the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one and he says they are of the world therefore they speak as of the world and the world hears them that is the final last days in which we are in because when they speak those of the world get together and they hear it and they accept it and they receive it but they will reject the plan of God we are of God he who knows God hears us he who is not of God does not hear us by this we know that the spirit of error and the spirit of truth that is there Jesus is also coming as a judge he's faithful and true and he comes to judge when he first came on earth 2000 years ago he avoided judging the things that were there in the natural when he was there preaching once a man from the crowd looked to him and said teacher tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me his brother had taken up all the inheritance of the family and was not willing to give it to the other brother so he's coming to Jesus and saying looking at him as a great leader tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me at that time Jesus refused to get involved with these earthly affairs because he had come there for a spiritual reason he had come there and he was focused he didn't want to get distracted at that time he said man who made me a judge or an arbitrator over you all he said was take heed and beware of covetousness for one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses so he cautioned them not to be taken up by it the things of the world and in materialism in being consumeristic in just filling our lives with material things trying to fill the void and the emptiness but the second time he comes he will come as a judge and he's not going to just be like a human judge he will judge in righteousness that is most important that we need a judge who is going to judge in righteousness no judge on earth can judge in righteousness in all the judgments that they pass they judge based on the evidence that is given to them if the evidence is not given they say the evidence was not given therefore though we are not able to give the right judgment they say oh we are not able to find fault with the accused because those who are supposed to give the evidence have not given the evidence so what can i do i cannot do anything but jesus doesn't just need evidence he knows everything in detail he is the one who sees 
you might have lost many things in life there would have been no judge to give you what is rightfully yours you could have gone here and there trying to get justice and everyone would have turned you down but i tell you when jesus comes again everyone on earth will get the right judgment for every injustice they faced in life they will receive at that time no one will be able to cheat and deceive and steal and rob at that time that time of the thousand year reign will be a wonderful awesome time when there will be justice when solomon who was just given us spirit of wisdom to judge that nation and they marveled at the wisdom he had at the judgments he gave when complex problems rose up how much more will jesus who is the wisdom of god be able to give justice to men he'll do it in righteousness jeremiah 33 15 and 16 it says in those days and at that time will cause to grow up to david a branch of righteousness he shall execute judgment and righteousness in the earth he will do what is right and just throughout the land he will be there in israel and he will give justice and judgment to all that are there in israel and he will set up thrones all over the world and he will appoint those who are of his disciples to be the ones who will judge in all the earth and because his spirit will be in them they will be able to give the right judgment you're all going to be kings in those days because you have proved to god that you're true and you're faithful and you're righteous he will then be able to take you up to heaven and then come down and put you up on a throne because he's seen you lived your life clear and straightforward he can trust you and give you at that time the position to judge the people of the world and the final thing which might shake up many people is that jesus will war at that time he comes who will be the faithful true one in righteousness he judges and he will also make war that would be a strange thing the people of the world would be shaken up the church which is not aware of the truth of god have not read the bible properly will also be shaken up they like to project jesus as this person who came 2000 years ago and he died and he died and he died oh he was good he was good and that's where they want to stop they don't want to come to the point where they see jesus as how he revealed himself to john the apostle on the island of patmos 2000 years ago he revealed himself in that fashion and manner john who lay on the bosom of jesus whom the lord jesus christ loved so much that peter himself knew that if john asked something then jesus would definitely speak and reveal to him that's a confidence that the apostles had john was so close to jesus that he had the confidence and the boldness to lie down on him at that time though he saw the power of god so he though he saw that he could raise the dead and though he could see him command the wind and the waves but when he saw him after he was resurrected as how he is right now it says he said i turned and saw to the voice and when i saw he said i saw seven golden lampstands and in the midst of the seven one like the son of man clothed with a garment down to the feet girded about the chest with a golden band his head and hair were white like wool as white as snow and his eyes like a flame of fire his feet were like fine brass as it were refined in a furnace and his voice as the sound of many waters and he had in his right hand seven stars and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword and his countenance was like the sun shining in its strength and when i saw him i fell at his feet as dead just the appearance of jesus was enough he who once was so close to jesus now he fell like dead he became unconscious he fell down and if jesus had not woken him up touched him maybe he would have even died after that 
This is a Jesus who is going to come again. The world has to know that. You've got to know that as a church. The first time he avoided war. In the garden of Gethsemane when multitude came with swords and clubs to capture him. Peter took out the sword and struck one of the servants of the high priest and cut off his ear. At that time what did Jesus say? He said to him, put your sword in your place in Matthew 26 verse 52. Why? Because how can the scriptures be fulfilled if Jesus had started the war, he doesn't start something and does not finish it. He finishes whatever he starts. If he had started the war at that time, he would have never gone to the cross. Who can come against him? Which army could have come against him? The entire Roman army with all their legions, with all their battalions, all the lacks of strange soldiers could have come to Jesus and they would have all been defeated. Every one of them even if all the other nations had come together, not one would have been able to win with Jesus at that time. That is why he didn't fight at that first time. But in the second time, he will come and he is coming to make war. And he will fight alone. Though the armies of heaven, all of us will ride with him, we will just be spectators at that time. He fights alone in this second time when he comes. He'll fight alone with the Antichrist and the false prophet and he'll fight alone with all those who received his mark and received the beast and worshipped it and the idol he will fight with all those opposed with him himself alone at the time he doesn't need our help he's not a king who needs security guards and he's depending on trusting on those who are around his personal protective X, Y, Z or whatever category of protection that the people of the world need. He doesn't need protection from anybody. He will fight alone. At that time, he will just be watching. Hallelujah. Know that. Set your mind. Renew your mind according to this truth. Let the people of the world know this also. Because they take it lightly. They think I can do whatever I want. What is going to happen? Who is Lord over me? If they know that they are going to face the wrath of God at that time, God is not going to come and be merciful unto them. But at that time, he will have to take up the sword. For he is the Lord mighty in battle. Psalm 24 verse 8 says, Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Psalm 45 3 it says, Gird your sword upon your thigh, your mighty one. They're telling unto God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Put your sword upon your thigh, O mighty one, with your glory and your majesty. And we, the church, have to rise up and we have to be now like how Jesus revealed himself to John. That's why he showed himself in such a fashion and manner. And then he said, write and send it to all the churches. That's why he told when he introduced the church in the very first time in Matthew. He told, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. It means that the kingdom of darkness, the devil's kingdom is on earth at that time. And he's setting up the church so that the church would enforce the laws and plans of God. And they go conquering. They break down the gates. They break down all the strongholds of the devil from one village to another town to another city to another state from one nation to another nation. They go break down and destroy the works of the devil just like how Jesus started when he came on earth. We are supposed to be here and shining the light. We are supposed to be here and bringing justice and judgment in this city for the people of this nation. But churches... I'm sorry to say has not taken up that portion and that place. How can it take the portion and the place when the biggest achievement of most Christians is maybe making it on a Sunday morning on time and then they're very content and after that they don't come another two, three weeks saying, oh, I went and I think that is enough. I'll come after some time. How can we be taught? How can we be led? How can we be empowered to be such a church which delivers the people? Jesus comes and he rules in this white horse as a faithful, true, righteous judge to make war. You're supposed to be the ones who are supposed to make war for the people of the world, for the people of the house of God, for the church in these last days. 
You're not supposed to be hiding. The anointed are the ones who will hide behind the bush. When Goliath the giant stands up and he roars and he threatens the nations. But when the anointed come and they say, Who's this uncircumcised Philistine? I will strike you down and cut you down and I'll give your carcass to the birds of the air and they will feast on you this day. That's how the anointed of the Lord talk. That's how you got to be. But are you covering? Are you hiding? What is the difference between us and the people of the world? You are a new creation. You're no longer human beings. The day you accepted Jesus Christ and you were born again, you stopped being a human being. That's another topic. We'll see it. But know that you're the sons of God. You have the power of God. You have the spirit of God dwelling inside of you. Life and death are in the power of your tongue. You've been kept on this world to bring justice. You've been kept on this world to save the lost. Not be just whimpering and tottering around and limping about. We ourselves are limping about how can we go and tell the world. My God is a great God. You've got to come to that portion and that place where you are roaring as a lion. The Bible says the righteous are bold as a lion. They get up and they roar and every evil will flee. When you get up, the devil has to flee. Say, oh no, this man has got up. No, what is going to happen to me now? Let us all stand up at this time. Read the psalm of warfare. Psalm 91. Let us rededicate ourselves and let us declare once again. Psalm 91 verse 2. We started the service by surrendering ourselves, our body, spirit and soul and every part of us. But some of you were not there at that time. So we have to rededicate once again Psalm 91 verse 2. Where it says, I will say of the Lord. He is my refuge and my fortress, my God and him I will trust. So let us all say unto Jesus Christ this morning once again. You can open your mouse as you open your bible and tell it as loud as you can the lord jesus christ he is my refuge and my fortress my god in him i will trust let us now read from verse 1 psalm 91 this is a warfare psalm a psalm of protection and a psalm of victory at the time of war let us read from verse 1 he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers and under His wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion, the serpent. You shall trample underfoot because he has set his love upon me. Therefore, I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Hallelujah. Oh, victory belongs to those who belong to Jesus. Clap your hands. Oh, for the salvation of God. Oh, for the deliverance of God. For the blessing of God. Oh, for all that He's given. We, oh, thank Him this morning. We thank you, oh Father. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Holy Spirit. For your place, the church here, oh Heavenly Father, to be the light that shines. Just like how Jesus was there alone, he said to your advantage, I go because if I go, then the Holy Spirit, the same Spirit that was in Jesus Christ would be upon and inside of each and every one of his disciples that they can now become oh, 120 Christ on that upper room so that they can operate with that same power in that same fashion and manner that Jesus 
trained them to be and he showed them with his own life and then it multiplied the church increased and has spread and we are here in this city of chennai in this nation of india so that we can take that place so that we can be like jesus christ not just in doing good not just in making the right choices but to stand up and shine the light so that the people of this nation would know the truth so that he will be struck down that every lie would be struck down that the devil and all the kingdom of darkness would flee for the church should be the lighthouse that shines and expels every darkness in the city and nation oh if that's your desire oh if that's your heart ask god this morning oh lord oh this is my desire this is my heart's cry i want to be like this oh train me oh lord that is why you come to following jesus christ and you become his disciple so that he can train you not just a member who just comes on and off to a service and that's about it you've got to be a disciple a pupil who connects with god every day your holy spirit is the one who will teach you when you're not here in the house of god when no one else is in connection with you you don't need anybody but the anointing for the anointing is the truth and is not a lie and he will teach you of all things oh yes oh god pray that there'll be a transformation in this city that multitudes would turn to you and come to you that they will oh lord follow you that they will call on your name that you be glorified that the gates of hell would be broken down in this city oh in this nation oh lord jesus yes this all your wonderful mighty name giving you glory honor and power and praise in jesus name yes can pray amen god bless you want to clap your hands and thank god once again